Welcome back to Automation of the Week. My name is Brian Hayes, and today I want to show you how to take a flow that we've already built and make it more advanced. So what we want to do today is automatically create asset records on an account when an opportunity is won. And we've already created the flow to do that. So if you want to see exactly how this flow works and how to build it, take a look at our other video, the links in the description. We're going to build upon this though. So right now, the way it operates is when that opportunity is closed one, it triggers our flow. We then get the line items related to that opportunity. For each of those line items, we're taking values from the line item and essentially assigning it to fields on a new asset record. And this asset record doesn't yet exist. It only exists within our flow, not in our database. So we then take that asset record variable and we add it to a collection, which is ultimately just a group of those brand new asset records. And then ultimately we create those records all at once outside of the loop at the end of the flow. So this works really great if you've got a line item on your opportunity that has say a quantity of three or four it's then going to create an asset for that same product, and it's going to give that same quantity, three or four. But what we're going to do today is actually have it create multiple asset records equal to that quantity on the line item. And so let's talk about just for a second why you might want to do that. When a salesperson is creating a quote, they're typically not going to repeat that same product multiple times. They'll say, hey, you want to buy a generator from us? You want to buy four of them? Okay, we'll put the quantity of four next to the generator line item, and here's your total price. Works great for a quote, but then once those generators are manufactured and shipped, the company probably wants to track the serial number of the different items that were sold to that particular company. So if we just create one asset record, it's difficult to know where to put the serial number. And we could have a big text field and just paste all of the serial numbers in there, but then it also makes it more difficult downstream to report on you know, issues uh, that arise like cases or malfunctions or service agreements, service orders, that kind of thing. So if you wanna track the individual service number for each product that you sell to a customer, it probably makes more sense to have a separate asset record for that customer for each one of those products they bought. But again, we wouldn't wanna do that on the quote. It would look terrible for the salesperson to have that same line item you know, multiple times, and it would probably be difficult for the customer, you know, to read it and understand how much they would be paying. But what we can do with this flow is we can modify it so that it looks at the quantity, and each time that that quantity is greater than one, we can create a new asset record. And we'll put that in our collection, and it'll create all those assets at the end. So you end up getting a total number of asset records for a product that equals the quantity that was on the line item. Now I know that's a lot of information, so let me show you how it works right now, and then we'll we'll modify this. So we've got an account here, raise real estate. Let's go ahead and create an opportunity. We'll say this is new business. We'll say he's gonna buy some generators from us. We're in our opportunity here. I'm gonna add a product. I'll add a thousand kilowatt and a 10 kilowatt generator, and we're gonna sell two of the thousand kilowatt and just one of the 10. Hit save. And now when we mark this as closed one, our automation that already exists is, is gonna fire. It's gonna create those asset records for us. If we look at the account level, let's look at the assets that are related. And here we can see that our thousand kilowatt hour generator has a quantity of two. The change that we're about to make is gonna essentially duplicate this so that we've got a different record that equals the quantity on the products. All right, let's take a look at the flow and see how we would do that. Essentially, what we're going to do is create a loop within our loop, but we're not going to use the loop element to do it because we're not going to be iterating over another collection. Instead, we're going to use a decision element and the decision will evaluate our current quantity. And if the current quantity is greater than one, then we're going to loop back around and we're going to add more values to a variable and add that back to a collection. So let's do that. Add a decision element here right after the loop. And we'll say quantity is greater than one. Our, our main outcome here will be yes. And our default outcome, we can call this no. If that's a little bit confusing, um, we could say the default is one or the, um, the new outcome is more than one. Whatever makes the most sense to you is, is the thing to do. 
Now in our evaluation here, click into the resource section, scroll down to this record variable that says current item from loop. So this is looping through each line item individually. So this is the current line item in our loop. And we can look at the quantity field. There it is. And if that quantity is greater than one, it evaluates to true, we go down the more than one path. If it is not greater than one, if it's you know equal to one or less, it probably shouldn't be less, uh, then it'll go the other direction. Actually, looking at this now, we want this decision to come after these steps here. So let's let's fix that. Go ahead and cut that decision element and then paste it right after our add the asset to a collection step. Now what we can do here is we can say, if it's more than one, go ahead and connect back up here to this step. So if it's more than one, we're going to come right back to the assign the values to an asset variable and then add that asset to a collection, you know, repeating these two steps. If it's equal to one, we don't, we don't need to repeat it. We don't need to create another asset for this particular line item. So let's just go ahead and finish this part of the loop. And then it'll move on to the next line item in our looping collection. The next thing we need to do is decrease that quantity field on our asset record. Uh, that way, as it goes through our loop, it's decreasing that quantity by one so that we're not endlessly creating assets. We want it to create just the number of assets that we have that equals the quantity. So let's add an assignment step here. And this assignment step is going to be decrease quantity by one. Under variable, go down to current item from loop and find that quantity field. And we're going to say subtract one. And then we get to our decision after that, which is looking at whether or not that quantity is greater than one. And what I just realized here looking at it is that actually greater than one isn't good enough. So we need to change this slightly. Edit that element. Instead of it being greater than one, go with greater than or equal to one. And we'll change that in our label as well. And we can even change the name of this to just quantity count here. Now this is making more sense. I think the math is going to check out, but when we test it, We'll find out for sure. The last thing that we want to change is the step here to assign values to the asset variable. Click into that. And what we were doing before is we were taking the actual quantity value that's on the line item and pushing it to our new asset quantity. Well, we don't want to do that anymore because an asset is only ever going to have a quantity of one. So I'm going to remove that value on the right hand side and just put in one there. That way it's not referencing that quantity field that we keep changing within our flow, which would get very confusing. And I think that's going to do it. Go ahead and hit save, and then we can debug this. We can also activate it and test it in our environment here. Let's come back to our account for Ray's real estate, and let's delete these assets. I'm going to open up this generators opportunity here and take it out of the closed one stage. And to make things a little bit clearer, I'm going to change our products a bit. We'll have one diesel generator as a product. And let's go ahead and add in a SLN. We have a service level agreement, just one service level agreement uh, equal to bronze here. So what we should get is three assets. We should have two separate assets for our generator and then one asset for our SLA. Go ahead and hit closed one. And let's see how that runs. If we go back to our related account, scroll down to assets, there we have it. We've got our SLA is an asset, and then we've got two generator records, each with a quantity of one, which now lets you edit that once you decide what you're gonna ship to the customer, and you can put in a unique serial number for each one of those products. In our next video, I'm gonna show you another advanced technique to modify this flow. Instead of having multiple records for the same product, we're actually gonna do the opposite. And we'll check first before we create additional assets to see if this account already has an asset record for one of our products. And in that case, we're just going to add to the quantity of the already existing asset instead of creating a new one. And which direction you want to go, either the flow we looked at today or the one we'll show you in the next video, really depends on how your business operates and if you're trying to track serial numbers for products and that kind of thing. If you're a software company, for example, and you're selling licenses to a software product, you probably don't want to have a whole bunch of asset records. You'd rather have one asset record for the type of license that they purchased and then the quantity of how many licenses they're currently paying for. And I'll show you how to do that in our next video.
I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for more training when it comes to Salesforce Flow, take a look at our live class. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.